Welcome back to the series, What, Why, God? From Apathy to Questions. And today we have with us David Barnett. And I asked him a few weeks ago to participate in this because he has some great insight into a lot of things about God. He was a minister at one point, and now he ministers to adults and to children in crisis. So, of course, he is asking the question, if there is a loving God, why is there pain and suffering? And that's a question a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. And it is not something we're going to cover all in this video. We will only have this for about five or ten minutes. And there are books written on this. Uh, and there are a lot of different people that have these questions, either Christians and non-Christians alike. And mm -hmm. so let's talk a little bit about that, David, and um, why you chose this. Uh, I thought initially it was because he's had a lot of pain and suffering in his past, but you're having pain and suffering now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I've been acquainted with pain and suffering a long time. And, uh, but the good news is, is that because of my relationship with Jesus, I've been able to overcome it or the best way I can, you know, praise God. Suffering, there's very few times there's not a choice connected to the suffering. Mm. But what if God hadn't created us with choice? We don't be a bunch of robots. There wouldn't be any, really any, there wouldn't be any reason to live. So God knew this ahead of time that, mm -hmm. you know, God created us to make choices. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news about that is we can make great choices. And I think, too, it's a lot of people say, well, you know, I make good choices and, and I'm still in pain. I think one of the things we talk about you know, when you want to have, what's the definition of sin? It's basically missing the mark. So whenever you sin, you miss the mark, which means you're hitting something, and that sin's going to affect other people. Mm -hmm. So when you have p children who are in those situations, that person is sinning. They're, they are hurting other people, which then right. causes more pain, which then causes more pain. And I think God wants to step into that pain. Well, you know, uh, I was reminded of the story about uh, the blind man in, in the book of John. And uh, if you remember, the blind man comes and all the disciples are hanging around mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, they ask this theological question of Jesus. Well, uh, and I think they're always trying to get a little bit of, you know, <laughs> trying to gain something on Jesus, yeah. you know, but you yeah. can't do that. Yeah. But Jesus asked the, they asked the question to Jesus, well, uh, you know, who sinned? Who sinned? This yep. man or his parents? And uh, which we, often think of is that the reason that we do suffer and we do have pain is because somebody sinned and sometimes it's not that way. Sometimes it's not. And he, and Jesus said, no, uh, he didn't, it wasn't sin. It was so the glory of God could be revealed. Mm -hmm. So the work of God could be revealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then he healed, healed him, him and God's mm -hmm. work was yeah. done. Yeah. And you know, that, that's the way that I look at suffering now is that when I see people suffer, uh, have pain, I think, well, how can God work in this situation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's what, as Christians, that's what most of us probably do. Mm -hmm. And even in uh, my personal situation, you know, I try to think, how can God work now? I do get down, man, over the, some of these things, you know, that have happened to me recently. Uh, it is depressing to not be able to do those things you did when you were, you know, even 36 mm -hmm, or 40, mm -hmm, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, that sort of thing. But Yet, because of, I made that decision years ago to follow Christ and to, to stay into his word, I always go back to the word, you know. Uh, there's, you know, the book of Psalms, for example, you know, there's, there's psalms of, of joy and praise, and, but there's also those lament psalms, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, why God, why God? Even the, that scripture, why God have you forsaken me, mm -hmm. was, was from the Psalms. Yeah, and, you know? and, and Jesus said it. Jesus so it's a the reminder, Psalms. too, that Jesus also suffered. Oh, He yeah. came here to suffer. He, he's God, and he decided to come down here and to save us and for the forgiveness of our sins. Exactly. And then when you look at the suffering of Jesus, when we go in and read, you know, those crucifixion, that crucifixion story, uh, I don't know of anybody that suffered more than that. Yeah. And just then going back and through reading and reading the stories of crucifixions and that sort of thing, you realize that Christ went through that 
pain for us, for me. Yeah, yeah, and, for and, you. and I think too, the other part of that is when you're talking about pain and suffering is that it teaches you to have empathy mm -hmm. and be able to relate to other people. And so when you have gone through it yourself, you're able to help someone else. And it reminds you that you are not by yourself in all of this. You've learned from it. You can help others like you have helped other children and, and adults in their pain. You can also learn how to release your pain and suffering as we talked about. You, you mentioned Johnny Erickson Tata and what kind of things that she's done. And I think of Nick Vulicek. So you tell me mm. a little bit about your, your thoughts on her. Oh, incredible story. Uh, she, had, it was, she was a car wreck, right? Car accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when she, she was, was very 19 young. or something yeah, like that. Very yeah, very young. Yeah. And became a quadriplegic. Actually, I, uh, I worked with the college, a quadriplegic when I was in college. It's kind of a part of a, a class. And uh, he had, in his own way, he had tried to commit suicide because he was just so distraught. And most quadriplegics... Uh, or anybody that suffers like that goes through tremendous depression. That's one thing about not only when there's pain and suffering is it's usually something physical. Yeah. But it causes mental. Mental, mental and mental depression. Mental pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you can get so depressed you think the only way to end that pain in your brain is to end your Release life. Release it all. Yeah. End your mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Uh, but and Joni Erickson tried it. She probably thought of that too, but. What she did, she took her pain and suffering and turned it in. And that's, this is a, in scripture, this is a huge thing about pain and suffering is it's as Christians, if we follow the word and get into the word and follow what Christ wants us to do, it all becomes for the glory of God. Yeah. We turn our pain and suffering in something and good. Yeah. And it's, then we say to the God be the glory. And that's what Johnny Erickson Tata yeah. has she done. She says, well, how can I use this to right. help other people? And through God, she was able to do so, well, she so still much is. more. She's, yeah, continues to yeah, do, written for sure. incredible books, mm -hmm. uh, speaks. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, a lot of the, like, uh, Philip Yancey and others that have wrote, written these books on suffering, Tim Keller, have gone to Joni, yeah. you know, as a research. You yeah. know, tell, yeah. me, tell me what you did. There is a point in all right. of this. Yeah, that, that you, can, you are still worthwhile. Your life means something. Mm -hmm. Whether you have arms and legs, whether you can move or you can't move, even if you have a mental disability. I've said this story about my Nana, who, great Christian woman, had dementia in her later days, used to tell her nurses all the time, or tell my mother, I should say, that her nurses would take her for these nice long walks and all that sort of stuff. And they really didn't because she's in a home and she can't go do anything because she didn't have the mental ability. And, you know, you lose, and she'd also broken her hip. But when she passed, the nurses said she was the most loving person with dementia that they had ever worked with. Wow. Because she had Christ in her life the whole time. She still ministered in her mental illness. Mm -hmm. And so there is, if you have God as your foundation, mm -hmm. you have meaning and you have worth. I think that's what he reminds you, mm -hmm. right? He, he reminds you that you still have meaning and worth, even in the pain and the suffering you still mean a lot to him, which is why Jesus came. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of What, Why God with David Barnett. So glad that we had this conversation. And if you really liked this conversation today, please feel free to like and share. And in the description, we will have links to the books and other information that might be useful to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome.